हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस प्रैक्टिकल कोर्स ऑन स्टैटो सॉफ्टवेयर इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ टू इंटरप्रेट द डिज़ाइन रिजल्ट्स एंड हाउ टू डिटेल बीम्स एज फर एस टी थर्टी फोर एंड आई एस वन थ्री नाइन टू जीरो टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन कोड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एक्टिवेट द साइड व्यू एंड सिलेक्ट द प्लिन फ्लोर बीम्स लाइक दिस नाउ क्लिक ऑन व्यू सिलेक्टेड ऑब्जेक्ट्स ओनली एंड देन क्लिक ऑन द टॉप व्यू Now press Shift plus B from the keyboard in order to display the beam numbers. So I will explain detailing of this continuous beam one twenty two, one twenty three, one twenty four. So open the output file in order to see the design results. Double click on the beam option. So here the stat is showing the design results for all the beams, starting from beam number one zero one. So scroll down until you get beam number one twenty two. So for beam number one twenty two. The length of the beam is three eight one zero mm. Size of the beam is two thirty by three hundred mm, and cover here is thirty mm. Please note here that the cover that we have added in the design parameters tab was the clear cover, which was twenty five mm. However, in the output file, the stat will show you the effective cover, which is thirty mm. Now, coming to the summary of reinforcement areas, the stat will show the values of top and bottom reinforcement at five different sections. The first section will be at distance of zero mm, that is, at the start of the beam. The next section will be at distance of l by four. So, if you divide the length of the beam by four, that is three eight one zero mm by four, so that will give you nine fifty two point five mm. The third section will be at distance of two l by four, so that will be equal to one nine zero five mm. The fourth section will be at distance of 3l by 4, so which will be equal to 2857.5 mm, and the last section will be at the end of the beam, which is nothing but l, so which is 3810 mm. So since the uh, stat is showing the values at five different sections, however, practically we will consider only three sections. So we will consider the maximum of these two values. that will be your first section then we will consider this middle section and the last section will be again consisting of maximum of these two values so let's note down all these values so for beam number 122 the top reinforcement value at the first section will be maximum of 495 and 103.62 so that is nothing but 495.13 mm square Similarly, the second section value will be zero mm square, and at the third section, the top reinforcement value will be five one nine point eight five mm square. Similarly, for the bottom reinforcement, considering maximum of these two, so that will be one twenty seven point three eight mm square at the first section. We will take the middle value, which is one twenty five point one nine mm square, and at the third section, we will consider the maximum of these two values, which will be one one six point nine zero mm square. Similarly, you can note down the values for beam number one twenty three and beam number one twenty four as well. So these are the values for the beam number one twenty two. We have three different sections, and for top and bottom reinforcement, these are the values. Similarly, for beam number one twenty three and one twenty four. So as per these values, we need to detail our beams. Now the first rule in order to detail the beams is that as per IS one three nine two zero, we should provide at least two bars at bottom and top, and that should be full bars. So I have prepared an Excel sheet in order to do the detailing for this. So first of all, coming to the bottom reinforcement values consider the minimum value out of all these values so for example here 
at the bottom reinforcement the minimum value here is 103.62 mm square so first of all we will satisfy 103.62 mm square with the help of bar dia so let's say we are providing two 12 mm bars the minimum diameter of bar that is used in beams is 12 mm so we are starting with 12 mm so if we provide two 12 mm bars then the area of that will be nothing but 2 multiplied by pi by 4 times of diameter of bar square so that is nothing but 226 mm square so obviously this minimum value is satisfied that is 103.62 mm square so what we will do is we will continue full 2 12 mm bars from this end to this end now the problem here is that we need an extra value to satisfy these values that is 428.51 mm square 384.96 mm square and 430.75 mm square so instead of 2 12 mm bars let's try it with 2 16 mm bars so that is giving us the value as 402.124 mm square so still the value is not satisfied because at this support we have 428.51 mm square and at the left of this support we have 430.75 mm square however all these three values as well as all these three values and this middle value that is 384.96 mm square is satisfied with 216 mm bars so what we need we only need an extra bar at this support and at this support as well to satisfy this extra value so we will provide an extra 12 mm bar at both the supports so now at that support we have 5.221 mm square and that will satisfy the reinforcement values requirement so what we have done we have done we have provided two 16 mm bars which are throughout starting from this end of the beam to this end of the beam and to take care of this extra reinforcement values we have provided one 12 mm bar a diameter of bar at the bottom so here eb represents extra bottom bars and one more thing is that whatever the reinforcement that you have provided you must extend it beyond the support inside the support at a length equal to development length now let's satisfy the reinforcement requirements at the top so now consider minimum values out of all these values at the top so here the minimum value is 495.13 mm square so let's first satisfy this minimum value requirement so if we provide 216 mm bars at the top throughout then it will give a reinforcement value of 402.124 mm square however at the top we need at least 495.13 mm square so let's try it with 116 mm bar and 120 mm bar so that is giving me 515.221 mm square so that is sat satisfying the minimum reinforcement requirement so what have we have done we have provided 116 mm dia plus 120 mm dia throughout to satisfy this minimum value requirement however at this support we need an extra value of the reinforcement to satisfy this extra requirement so what we will do we will provide one again 116 mm bar so in total 216 mm bars and 220 mm bars at that at those supports which are having extra requirements so obviously that is satisfying the requirement of 1030.44 mm square which is greater than 951.05 and 953.11 mm square so this is how we will carry out the detailing portion now let me show you the stirrup values as well so coming to beam number 122 as per stad we need to provide 2 leg 8 mm dia at 105 mm center to center so as we are following the 13920 code of ductile detailing so as per that we need to calculate the stirrup spacing as well so as per this code the spacing of stirrup should be less than or equal to d by 4 
where d is the effective depth of the beam then uh, it is 8 times db that is diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar and 100 mm whichever is smaller out of all these three values that spacing we need to provide up to a distance of 2d from the face of the support and at the center that is for the remaining distance which is nothing but equal to the total span of the beam that is l minus 2d from the left side and 2d from the right side so for this middle distance we need to provide a hoop spacing of not more than d by 2 so let's calculate first of all these values so what we will do is in excel i have prepared a formula that is we will consider minimum of d by 4 so here d is 269 mm so how we got this value of effective depth we know the size of the beam that is 230 mm by 300 mm so input here 230 and 300 and let's say we have provided here minimum bar, uh, value of bar was 12 mm so here i will input here as 12 mm and clear cover that we have assumed was 25 mm so based on that effective depth is nothing but overall depth minus clear cover minus die of bar so we have the effective depth of the beam so we will use this formula that is less than or equal to d by 4 8 times db and 100 mm whichever is smaller out of all these three values so in excel i have used the minimum function that is smaller of d by 4 8 times die of bar and 100 mm whichever is minimum so i have used here the minimum function and i will round down that value to the multiple of 10 so for that i have used the floor function if you don't have this basic knowledge of excel then you can watch my video on the basic functions that we must know in excel sheets so we will get a value of 60 mm in the end zone that is up to a distance of 2d from the face of the support as shown in this diagram and for the middle zone it is clearly written that the hoop spacing should not ex exceed d by 2 so if we divide this by 2 that is 269 by 2 and if we round down that value to multiple of 10 then we will get 130 mm center to center so what we will do we will provide 2 leg 8 mm dia at 60 mm center to center in the end zone and the reinforcement value that is shown instead is 105 mm center to center so we will provide the minimum value of out of all uh, these two values that is minimum of 130 and 105 in the middle zone so it will be equal to 105 mm in the middle zone so in the end zone it is 60 mm and in the middle zone it is minimum of these two values that is 105 mm and if you see the shear force diagram you know that the shear force is maximum at the supports that's why the spacing of stirrups is closer near the supports so this is how you will carry out the design of shear reinforcement for the continuous beams now let me show you the calculation of development length as well so open this sheet 1 in order to calculate the development length we will use the formula that is given in IS456-2000 code so the development length LD is equal to diameter of the bar multiplied by 0.87 FY and divide by 4 tau BD so we need first of all the value of diameter of the bar which is 12 mm then we need the value of FY that is grade of steel which is 500 Newton per mm square in our case and in order to calculate the value of tau BD we need the value of grade of concrete that is FCK because the value of tau BD depends on the grade of concrete this table is also given in IS 456-2000 code so in our case the grade of concrete is M25 so from the drop down list select M25 grade concrete so if you select m25 grade concrete the value of tau bd will be automatically taken from this table with the help of vlookup function in order to understand how this vlookup functions and match functions works you can watch my previous video on 
some basic functions that you can use in excel sheets so once you have the value of tau bd you can easily calculate the value of development length one thing that you should note here is that the development length in the tension zone and in the compression zone will be different in the case of compression zone you should increase the value of bond strength by 25% so here in the case of de uh, development length in compression you can see here that i have multiplied 1.25 that is i have increased the value of bond strength by 25% and if you have HYST bars that is bars which are of grade FE415 or FE500 then you must increase the value of bond strength by 60% so in both the cases you have seen here that I increased the value of bond strength by 60% that is I have multiplied 1.6 factor over here and I have used if and or function to do this calculations so the development length in tension is 582.59 mm and the development length in compression is 466.07 mm obviously the development length in compression will be lesser as compared to the development length in tension because if you have compression then the concrete can hold the bar more rigidly and thus we can reduce the value of development length and we can save the cost of the bars so Let's provide these development lengths in our detailing drawing. So whatever bars that you have provided in the tension zone and the compression zone, you must extend that bar inside the column which is having a length of development length. And as far as 13920 code, in addition to the development length, you should provide an extra length of 10 times diameter of the bar. So the total length that you should extend inside the column is LD plus 10 dia and one more thing is that if the bar that you have provided in the tension zone is obviously in the bottom face so that uh, that bar you should extend upwards in the compression zone and similarly the bar that you have provided in the compression zone that is at the top that bar you should extend in the tension zone that is downwards inside the face of the column so this is how you will carry out the detailing of beams as per sp34 and as per is13920 2016 code so guys that's all for this video you can like share and subscribe to my channel so don't miss any future update for this practical course see you in the next video